What time is it? It's science time. Science, science time. Let's oh, oh, oh. And just unwind. One, two, three, four, here we go. Learn so much, your brain explodes. Oh. Lessons so cool, so fresh. Beats so big, you'll lose your breath. Learning facts are real cool stuff. Scream for more, can't get enough. It's, it's science time. It's fun, your best believe. Explore and learn new things. Come and join me, please. I'm Mr. C, and this super smart group is my science crew. Lila is our notebook navigator, Alfred is our experiment expert, Riley is our dynamite demonstrator, and London is our research wrangler. Working with my team is the best and makes learning so much fun. Actually, you should join us. Today, we're talking density. What time is it? It's science time. Whoa, oh my gosh, that was so cool. Welcome to DIY Science Time. I'm Mr. C and I'm so glad you're here to be part of our crew today. We're talking lava lamps. This lava lamp uses a heating element to make this globby stuff float up and down. But I bet we could use some science to create our own heatless lava lamp. Let's give it a try. This lava lamp experiment has me erupting with excitement. And best of all, the materials for today are ones you probably already have at your house veggie oil, water, an empty bottle, food coloring, an effervescent tablet, and don't forget our science notebook. A science notebook is a tool that every scientist should have, and it gives us a place to record all of our learning. Taking good notes and being organized allows us to be better scientists. A science notebook allows us to go back and review all the data and information we've gathered during our experiments. Plus, it allows us to share results with other scientists who might be interested in learning more about what we've discovered. Whenever you see the notebook pop up on the screen, like this, it's a reminder that this is a good place for us to jot down new information. You can see I've already added a title and a list of materials for today's activity. Our crew is still going to have lots of information to collect and organize as we go through the experiment, so keep your notebook handy. Most importantly, the more you use the science notebook, the better you'll get at taking notes and recording data. If you don't have a science notebook yet, download a copy of Mr. C's science notebook from the website. In order to build our heatless lava lamp, we need to use something other than a heat source to create the bubbles. That's why we're going to use this effervescent tablet. When we place this effervescent tablet into water, it starts to fizz. It's actually a chemical reaction taking place to produce those bubbles. That's going to be what gives us our bubbles in our heatless lava lamp. The other thing is we actually need to mix the oil and the water together. Oh wow, look at that. That is so cool. The oil sits on top of the water. I bet that has something to do with density. Density is measured by how much mass there is in a given volume. Density equals mass divided by volume. Water, for example, has a density of one gram per milliliter or one gram per cubic centimeter. Let's look at these two cubes that take up the same amount of space. We call the amount of space something takes up volume. Each cube is filled equally with a thousand milliliters of water. We can now add sugar to each of them. 10 grams of sugar to cube A and 100 grams of sugar to cube B. As you can see, although both cubes are still taking up the same amount of space, one cube has more mass inside of it, which means it's more dense. We measure density by using a scientific tool called a scale. You can see on this scale that the cube that has more sugar inside is heavier. Now that we know how that works, we can use the idea of density to make the bigger version. Let's do it.
Isn't that so cool? Here's the thing, we need to add some food coloring so that we can see those bubbles really well. Wait for it, it's gonna drop here any second. Oh, that's awesome. And now we're gonna take this effervescent tablet and drop it into this container. This is our heatless lava lamp. Are you ready? I'm gonna break it in half so it fits. In three, two, one. Okay, we've got some bubbles, we've got some bubbles. Oh, they're starting to turn blue. There they are. We have our heatless lava lamp. Oh, that is so awesome. They're starting to get darker now too because the water's mixing up. That is so cool. This effervescent tablet falls down through the oil and into the water and falls to the bottom of the container. That means it's more dense than both of those. The chemical reaction taking place allows this effervescent tablet to produce carbon dioxide. That gas is less dense and comes up through the oil to the top where it pops. What's really cool about it is this can happen over and over and over again. Oh, I think the tablet, oh, did you look at those big bubbles? This is so awesome. Let's try it again. I put way more tablet in there this time, and we're getting a much better reaction. Pick your favorite food coloring and build your own heatless lava lamp. Mr. C has been busy building and testing the heatless lava lamp. I've included a sketch of the lava lamp design in our notebook, and also included the definition of density. Vegetable oil has a density of about 0.92 grams per milliliter, while water has a density of one gram per milliliter. That's why the oil floats on top of the water. It's less dense. I also made a safety note for us as a reminder that we should always keep the bottle cap off while conducting this experiment because the effervescent tablet produces gas and we don't want any pressure to build up inside the container. I wonder, how many times can we actually do this experiment and keep getting a reaction without replacing or adding more water? That could be something cool to test over a long period of time. Submarines use ballast and trim tanks, which are filled with air or water to submerge or raise the ship. When the submarine is floating on the surface, the tank is filled with air, causing its density to be less than the surrounding water. I can't wait to keep exploring density, and now we're going to build something really special. We're gonna build a tower of liquids. We've got corn syrup, soap, water, vegetable oil, and rubbing alcohol. These five things are going to hopefully stack up and we'll see which ones are most dense and which ones are least dense. Let's give it a try. Squeezing as hard as I can. Now we're going to carefully add water. Oh, oh, oh. All right, now vegetable oil. You've noticed I'm tilting the cup and container. That's because I want to have it running smoothly versus dumping it in. And our rubbing alcohol. That was so cool. This 
is so awesome and it's working really well. I'm really surprised actually that I was able to stack water on top of the soap. That, I didn't expect that to happen. So we've got our corn syrup on the bottom, which is the most dense. We've got our soap, our layer of water. Here we have our vegetable oil, and here we have the rubbing alcohol. And I colored the rubbing alcohol with some red food coloring so that we could see it better. We've created a density stack. This is a density stack. We have stacked up these five liquids to create this beautiful scientific stack. You should try some different things that you have in your fridge to see how they work. Here's another sweet density experiment to try at home. Since we know that density is measured by how much mass there is in a given volume, we can easily make sugar water with different densities. Take three cups and put eight ounces of water in each cup. Then add a drop of food coloring to each cup. Add two tablespoons of sugar to the first cup. Add four tablespoons of sugar to the second cup and add eight tablespoons of sugar to the third cup. Mix them up well to dissolve the sugar. Now carefully stack the sugar water into a new cup. The layer of sugar on the bottom is the most dense, while the layer of sugar water on top is the least dense. Isn't that amazing? A sugar stack tower? We already know that ice cubes are made from water, but have you ever thought about why ice cubes flow instead of sinking to the bottom of your cup? It's all about density. When water freezes, it expands and takes up more space as a solid than it did as a liquid. In fact, the solid takes up about 10% more space. So, the next time you have a cup of water with ice in it, spill this tidbit of science knowledge on your friends and family. This next activity is sink or float. We're going to see if these soda cans sink or float in the water to determine whether or not they are more or less dense than the water. But before I do that, the question is, is do you think they'll sink or float? Do you think this soda can, or should I say pop can, or should I say Coke can, will sink or float? You tell me. Let's give it a try. All right, that one totally sank. Let's give another one a try. Definitely sank. Oh, this one's floats. Let's try this one. Oh, that can also floats and our last can. Floated. Three cans floated, two cans sank. And the question is why? Wait, hold on. This is a diet soda. And this is a regular soda. I wonder what the difference is. All of the cans are the exact same size, which means they have the same volume. A single can of soda has 45 grams of sugar. However, diet sodas use artificial sweeteners. The artificial sweeteners have less mass, which means the density of the diet cans is less than the regular soda cans. So the soda cans were super cool, but what if we take it to the next level and use bowling balls? Just like the soda cans, these bowling balls are the exact same size, which means they have the same volume. But this bowling ball is 16 pounds and this bowling ball is 10 pounds. So the question is, will they sink or will they float? Let's give it a try. 
six, oh my gosh, that is so heavy. Oh, it totally just sinks to the bottom. Where are you going, buddy? Okay, we'll make space for your friend right here. Sounds good. And this is our 10 pounder. And it floats? And it floats? I thought for sure they were both gonna sink. Oh, that is so cool. It's all about density. Less dense than water, more dense than water. But the question is, what else could we throw into our fish tank to see if it's more or less dense than water? Hmm. Water can be used as a tool to measure the volume of an object. We can submerge an item into the water to see how much water is displaced. The water displaced should equal the volume of our item. Eggs typically sink in water because they are more dense than the water. You can actually make an egg float by adding a bit of salt and creating a salt water solution. Adding the salt to the water makes it more dense than the egg and causes the egg to float. Oh yeah, we're gonna keep having fun and now we're gonna do some density artwork. Our materials today are pretty simple. We need tempera paint, we need some school glue, and then we need a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And this recipe is pretty simple. So I have eight colors here and we're gonna do a one to one ratio of paint to glue. So I have a half a cup of paint already set up and we're going to pour a half a cup of glue into each one of these containers. So while you're mixing it, you're gonna notice that some of the paints feel thicker than others. What we're gonna do is we're going to use a little bit of rubbing alcohol and put that in to thin it out just a little bit. Your paints are gonna be a little different than my paints, so it's gonna be one of those things. And um, if it's different, that's okay. The best part is, is you're going to be able to make adjustments and test it to see what amount of rubbing alcohol and paint ratio to glue ratio is going to allow you to pour the paint the best. Now we have to stir those up one more time. I think we've got them all ready to go. All right, so the next step is to organize your space. To kind of get some of the colors. I'm gonna put some colors over here on the left, some on the right. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to use just some paper plates as the medium to paint on. And so I've got this plate here and I'm gonna take this bowl and put it underneath it so that when I pour my paint on it, if it rolls off, it's not gonna get stuck to the table. And actually this time, to help it move a little bit, I'm gonna put a little bit of paint on here. I'm just gonna move this all over it so that when I put the other paint on top, it already has a layer of paint to kind of move on. So hopefully it glides a little bit better. There we go. See if that does anything. Grab another little cup. Try some blue, try some white, some green, a little bit of black, and then some of this turquoise, and I'm even gonna throw in some yellow. All right, here we go. We're gonna plop this on here, turn it over. We're gonna let it sit just for a second so all of that paint starts to pour down. I have a lot of blue in there. I wonder if it's just too much. While we're letting that set, I'm gonna get another container ready. Actually, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I wanna pull this up and see what happens. Here we go. I'm gonna give it a nice pull, just move it around a little bit, and I'm gonna lift. Whoa! Oh 
Oh, that is amazing. It's a lot of blue. All right, I can let this one sit. It just, and look at all of the cells starting to form. The cells are forming. We've got some cracking down on this side. We've got all of these little cells trying to pop up. And it's because these layers of paint are trying to figure out how they're interacting with one another. And because of that, that's why we get these beautiful designs. And because we have it sit up, sitting up on top of that uh, other bowl, if any of the paint runs over, it's fine. It'll just kind of uh, roll over the side. And this is how you can create some amazing, beautiful artwork. Oh, stretch those out. Oh, those are, those are amazing over there. Look at that. That looks amazing. Let's try another one now that we have everything picked up again because I, I just can't get enough of this. And for this one, we're going to use the bottom of a soda bottle so that we can use it to kind of generate a pattern. And before we get started, we're going to put some white paint on top of this canvas board so that we are able to get the paint to pour and move and flow much more easily. I'm gonna take a new stick. Get that covered really nicely. It's so messy, but it's so awesome. Now what you're gonna do, you can use, I have a smaller 20 ounce, you can use a bigger two liter bottle, the bottom of it, you know, be creative, do whatever you want. And what we're going to do is put it right there in the center. And then we're just gonna pour paint on top of that. And we're gonna start with yellow. We're just gonna do a whole bunch of layers. Some green, some blue, some purple. We're gonna add some white, bright orange. We're gonna add some turquoise. I wanna go back to some more white. Just a little bit of black on there. I really like this blue. All right, so that is just running down the bottom of that container. And here in a moment, we're going to lift up as carefully as we can, and hopefully it floods it back to the center. Fingers are sticky. Oh, they're so sticky. I don't know if I can grab it. Let me try it from this side. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. It's coming back to the center ever so slowly. I don't know if I even wanna mess with it. I'm gonna carefully take this craft stick and pull it between, it looks like the blue and black petals. Here we go. Oh, I hate, I hate to even do this, but it's artwork. And then I'm gonna take the clean end. So I might use a couple of these. In. Oh. Should I go through the pedals? Should I go through the pedals? I don't want to go through the pedals. Here we go. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Look how awesome that looks. This is so cool. So not only do we have an amazing pattern, but we can start seeing the colors pop up and we're starting to see some cells. We're gonna let this sit and we're gonna let it dry. It's gonna take a little bit of time to let this dry, but we'll have an amazing piece of artwork that we can hang up on our walls to illustrate that science and art goes hand in hand. You guys should build one of these. Not build, but you should design and make one of these. And the longer you wait, look at this, all of the little cells are starting to pop up. It's absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to see your artwork. Hashtag DIY science time. Before all of this information floats away, let's make sure it's written down in our notebook. I added our definition for density, some of London's research, and also created a chart to record which items sank and which items floated in water. That density stack has me wondering how many different sugar layers you could stack on water. Four, five, or maybe six layers? We're definitely going to need more sugar. There are so many exciting things to test, 
So be sure to try some of these fun and sweet experiments at home. What an amazing day. Density is awesome. Make sure you take your information and get it into your science notebook. It's a great place to record and keep that information for future reference. We built a density stack. We built a heatless lava lamp. We checked out whether or not bowling balls will sink or float. Oh man, we had fun, didn't we? Keep learning, keep exploring, and remember, science is wherever you are. One more time. It's science time. I definitely think blah, blah 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 I definitely think we should try to stack up more liquid than oh my gosh I'll wait for this one we're gonna try something different instead of just mixing oh yeah I can't wait to try this one instead of just mixing water and vegetable oil like a oh yeah instead of just mixing we know it's awesome we know it's great it's science time so here we go to 